Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Later on, we're going to be talking about how to help sexual assault victims. But first, the perfect compliment to that, of course, beer from the Denver Business Journal and beer connoisseur, Ed Sealover. Thanks for having me on. I mean, anybody looks at you, they go, yeah, the guy likes beer. My history. My history. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Casey, ben, no, Michael Casey, I'm sorry. Michael Casey from uh, the Boulder Weekly. Correct. What in a liberal town do you really need an alternative weekly? I mean, it's not like it's loony <laughs> enough up there. Uh, yes, you do because the other one is owned by Hedge Fund out in Connecticut. Ooh, fair enough. Sound like the pra practice response to me. All right, first <laughs> let me let me come over here and, and ask. Um, mixing your two big interests, business and uh, a beer, and you put out you put out a book on beer. You you've got two, two. books on mm -hmm. beer. Yes. Um, um, First of all, why the fascination with beer? And is Colorado the Napa Valley of beer? I think it's a very fair thing to say about Colorado. I mean, we have the oldest craft brewery in America, Boulder Beer, that opened in 1979. We have uh, a population that is the second highest percentage uh, drinkers in terms of their beer is craft beer. Only Pennsylvania drinks more craft beer as a percentage than we do. Uh, we produce more beer than any state in America in Colorado. Whoa, um, whoa, stop there for a second, because growing up as a kid, it was Milwaukee, man, Wisconsin. That, there was a pipeline coming out of that state you know, from, from every really bad uh, lager maker uh, in the world seemed to come out of there. Well, that's true. Uh, two things. One, Colorado has the largest brewery in the world, uh, largest single-site brewery in the nation, excuse me, uh, in course uh, right here. Plus, we have an Anheuser-Busch plant. Plus, we have the fourth largest craft brewery in America in uh, Fort Collins and the ninth largest craft brewery in America in Longmont, those being New Belgium and, uh, and Oscar, Blues. Oh, Oscar Blues. Um, and the second reason is a lot of the bad Milwaukee beers are now made in Texas because they've been bought by other brands and moved elsewhere. Um. Now, Boulder, as you said, Boulder is, was, was the founder of Boulder Beer. I remember Boulder Beer back, back in college. How many craft brewing places are in Boulder? Oh, God. It depends on the, whether it's the city or the county, but um, Colorado's home to About 380 389 or something yeah. like that. Um, and really? there are nearly 400 breweries. Exactly. And there's new ones opening up every month. Do they ever go out of business? Oh yes, not as much as they get, they open out of open up. Yes. Yeah, yeah, open up. <laughs> yes, not as much as they open up though. Yeah, I mean, last year nationally, uh, the rate of going out of business rose to about three percent of breweries, but there was still a five to one opening to closing ratio. Most industries would kill for those numbers. Why Colorado? I mean, is there is there a reason why? this state instead of another state, not California. I mean, microbrewing and craft beers are growing up everywhere, but Colorado especially, why? Is there, is there, well, I mean, California, is there something I don't know? No, California is doing fine for itself. Colorado, there's a lot of people coming from without into Colorado, and they're bringing a lot of their brewing traditions with them. Um, a lot of uh, what started in Boulder actually started in California. A lot of these people moved to Boulder and then started up their breweries. And so you get this idea of all these people coming to a place. And that is why I think we're such a cosmopolitan brewing scene as opposed to, say, the Pacific Northwest or even out east. Is beer cheap to make? So when you own a restaurant, you always want to sell booze because it is like the biggest markup item. You know, you sell beer for $5, but it costs you 50 cents on, you know, on, on the draft. I've always thought if you're making the beer and it's on draft, is it even cheaper than the 50 cents? It's, it's cheap in the sense that you go from grain to glass in about a week as opposed to, let's say, wine, which it could be a couple of years before those grapes mature, and then it's a couple of years in a barrel somewhere before it ends up on the shelf or in your glass. Beer you can actually harvest and have out in the tap room in a couple of days, especially for like a uh, harvest season for like fresh hot beers. It's the sense that you can turn it over a lot. So there is this economy of scale, you can scale up it. So there's... Then why is it so expensive? Beer should be cheap. 
Beer is the working it's man's thing. <laughs> it's you expensive go, because that's Miller what people time. will pay. It's Coors. It's for working guys. Well, they, they have that beer, too. They've got beer for everybody. No, but now it's craft beer. It should be even cheaper. We're you making know, it in garages. No, exactly. And you talk about the economy of scale. Remember, these are much smaller breweries than Anheuser-Busch. Anheuser-Busch can sell its beer cheaply because it makes so much of it that it can operate on a much lower margin and still be in business. The smaller you are, you've got to have a higher margin to stay in. And frankly, some of these new beers, especially with the price of hops having gone up significantly in recent years, a lot of IPAs, double IPAs are heavily hopped, and those are not ex not cheap ingredients to have in there. So that's why you see some of these beers costing a lot more that are coming from uh, um, from craft breweries. An interesting stat is that craft breweries uh, have 13% of the market um, uh, production-wise in this country, the 24% of the market sales-wise, because they're that much more expensive. How is it going with supermarkets? Now that we can finally buy fully loaded beer in supermarkets, is that hurting the craft guys like they, they claimed it would? They I'm, claim I'm it saying, is. Do you believe them? Sure. I mean, you know, it's like the sure, they give me beer. Sure. It, it's like the Tolstoy line. You know, every happy family is happy the same way. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Each brewer that's suffering right now is for a myriad of reasons. It could be because of the supermarket bill. It could be because five-year leases are coming up and rent is going up. This is a very expensive city to or city state to live in. Uh, they could be ingredients, could be the barrel aging. So now we're having a shortage of barrels. It's difficult, it's more difficult to get the beer that you want to get that at one point there was barrels going everywhere because they were cheap in the the uh, vigorous when you're, when you're, and the when you're talking barrels, you're not talking about a keg, you're talking about No, I'm talking about wooden barrels really? that they age uh, barrel aged beers. Does it have to be in wood? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're don't, usually... Don't look at me like I'm a moron, you... <laughs> they're usually filled... Older beer snob, you. <laughs> they're usually <laughs> filled with they're... whiskey or wine or rum before Some they're filled spirit. with beer. Oh, really? Because that's going to add special bugs to the beer. Uh, Britannomyces, lactobacillus, things that are way too technical to get into right now. But that adds this really unique taste that people are seeking out now that's kind of woody, it's kind of vanilla-y because it's been in the barrels. Those kind of beers are selling for big money. Does every cult, by the way, I've always thought this, does every single culture have beer? Is this something that, that God blessed everyone around the world? I mean, no matter you go to some remote island, they've got some sort of beer? Yeah. Some of the oldest artifacts we have of human civilization are pots that they used to ferment beer in. And, they pro and it was probably just a discovery rather than an invention. They just, something rotted, it made them feel good for a little bit, and it made them sick, and they just figured out how to recreate that. And some people say there's no God. <laughs> um, so how is the pot industry now affecting the brewing industry here? Because you've got small pot operations, and now they're starting to grow into larger pot operations. You know, is it, is it, are they fighting for the same recreational marketplace? In some ways, yes, but the bigger fight they're having right now is for the same space. One of the reasons breweries grew up so quickly from about 2010 to 2015 here was they figured out they could locate in these back alley industrial right. parks and people would drive out and find them and the space was so cheap they could start up cheaply. Now those pot places want those same back alley industrial parks and they're snapping them up a lot quicker and it's harder for breweries to find space to afford themselves to get into right now. So why don't they just go out and... and out in the fields and, and, and go to Lyman and then truck it in. No, it's they're not growing things in that space. The, no, I mean the, distilling it. Um, no, but but they need to have their tap rooms in, in there as well. Yeah. So, uh, thanks for yeah, checking that. Yeah, I was supposed to turn um, that off. <laughs> and, and so that is stuff. Now, I mean, there is some overlap. You hear big breweries, Anheuser Busch, Molson Coors, talk more about the concern uh, about pot taking away some of their market, and that's why you see breweries like uh, Molson Coors investing in kind of THC infused non-alcoholic beer, like they're doing right now. Um, but I think the bigger fight in the Denver area is over space to put a brewery or to put. Uh, a pottery. A pottery. <laughs> a pottery. You find it, I mean, Boulder, good God. Uh, they, they go hand in hand, don't they? Yeah, they coexist. They coexist. Yeah. I don't, it, it, uh, the industry is too young at this point to say that they're actual competitors. I think beer is very entrenched in the culture, as you would say. Um, that if someone's going to choose one or the other, um, it's going to be on a case by case basis. It's not going to be a generational or it's not going to be a. Um, uh, geographical uh, sort of thing. I think that when it comes to food and beverage and recreation, it's not a zero-sum game. They all just kind of complement each other. The beer that I grew up with, you know, the Coors and that, that whole world of, of, a lot of them haven't survived. 
And so Coors has been able to grow a marketplace over the years. And I don't know where Schlitz is. I don't know where Hams is anymore. I don't know if any of these things still still evolve. Pa Pabst Blue Ribbon is still around. It's a hipster beer. Doing well. It's a hipster beer. Yes. Good. That's, that's what we need. And winning beer. JBF medals. Yes. And what? What's a JBF medal? Great American Beer Festival oh. is probably the biggest uh, competition of professional uh, brewers. They, they compete for gold, silver, and bronze medals every uh, September, October down here in Denver. Um, and Pabst has won several Light lager and American lager are categories, so there's still chances for the Paps and the Hams of the world to win medals. Yes. Go figure. All right, so now that all that stuff is uh, internationally, corporately owned, it used to be Coors, now it's Molson Coors, and uh, Budweiser is now, is it InBev, I think? And Anheuser-Busch, InBev. Yeah. A Belgian uh, company. And I heard the largest domestically owned beer company was Boston Brewery. Uh, I don't know if that's still true. I believe that is that still the be case because right. they're still larger than Yingling. So, yes. Yingling? They, yes. Yingling is a Pennsylvania-based company. If you live on the East Coast, you can drink the beer up and down the East Coast, um, but you just don't get it off of there. But, but yeah, I believe Boston Beer is still the largest. Mm. And they just merged with Dogfish Head, which makes Dogfish Head. Yes. All right. Well, well, got a minute here left. What is the stupidest name for these craft beers because it seems like there's a race to the bottom of coming up with really dumb names and the dumber the name the more it has that shelf appeal I'm going to go the opposite way because I was just talking about this with a friend. My favorite name in Colorado is a, uh, uh, a Russian imperial stout that's made by Called Arms Brewing. They simply call it Shirtless Putin Nuzzling Dolphins. One more time, please. Shirtless Putin Nuzzling Dolphins. Your favorite, sir? I can't top that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened to uh, the beautiful thing about Coors and I'm, I'm assuming Schlitz and others was it was a guy's name. You know, this is, you know, Wrigley's gum. It's Wrigley. You know, mm -hmm. there was a guy's name. Nobody, nobody does that anymore. I think you want to more incorporate yourself with the area you're from. Yeah. You see a lot of Colorado town names, a lot of Colorado trying to get into the names. People want to associate themselves with the Colorado brewing scene. All right. Last question. Favorite. Of what? If you're ordering a <laughs> beer, you can have any beer you want right now. Colorado Kind. So yeah, it's Southern Sun. Colorado Kind. Delicious. Because it's because it's malty, it's hoppy, it's, it's fresh, kind. it's refreshing. It's yeah. for potheads, isn't it? It is <laughs> kind, kind, but it's for everyone. It's for everyone. Uh, I'd probably still go if I'm ordering a Colorado beer with Epic's Big Bad Baptist Imperial Stout, aged in whiskey barrels, made with coffee, chocolate, and a ton of booze. It com comes with an umbrella in it. I'm, I'm pretty certain. Uh, I'll, I'll bring one on next yeah. time. We'll see if you're still sitting. Pimp, pimp the book. <laughs> yeah, put, pimp the book before. Colorado now. Excursions with History Hikes and Hops came out three years ago uh, from History Press. It's available online. Uh, uh, Ed C. Lover, that's me. That's the author. It's a great book. You gave me a copy, and I tried to knock off each brewery, but I haven't, haven't gotten there yet. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned.